Hey everyone, here are the answers to the questions for the Q&A video thing I posted a couple days ago. Um, I think it's 15, and we will get through them hopefully in about 15 minutes. Um, so uh, let's just dive right in. Kin Moon asks, what build is tank, I guess tankiest, um, or good at tanking, and has a good clear speed, and can do all the content from normal to ultimate. I'm having difficulty choosing a build. So there are a lot of builds that can handle the game from normal to ultimate. And um, in terms of a super tanky build, I'd probably say a warder, a spellbreaker, um, a battle mage, a uh, maybe even a witch blade or um, a commando, just things that combine well with Arcanist and Soldier and occasionally Shaman can become really, really tanky. If you mean just standing in the middle of things and enemies are either swinging at you and missing completely or swinging at you and you have so much health you just don't care, it's it's combinations with Soldier and Arcanist usually. Um, I personally recommend if it's especially like your first time through the game to either make a Panetti's replicating missile character, um, either a sorcerer or a spellbreaker, or make a blade arc related character because blade arc is a really easy build to to understand what's going on because you just basically left click and just swing these giant weapon slashes through all the enemies. Um, and it falls off a little bit at the end, gets a little tricky at the end because it's it's in the, the uh, blade. Yeah, Blade Master Tree, but I mean, it's still not bad, not a bad thing to to play your first time through. Um, I used to recommend a Blackwater Cocktail Commando, or just something based around Blackwater Cocktail, but that ability is kind of like it's not bad. It's just it's not what what I recommend anymore for beginner beginners. But um, yeah, Panetti's replicating missiles are great, uh, especially as a sorcerer or a spellbreaker. And um, I would definitely say that's the easiest starter build to pick. Bogren asks, which Devotion Constellation surprised you the most with how fun or powerful it was, or which one didn't seem as good as it is until you actually tried it slash level it up? I would say Scales of Okama is probably my favorite constellation. Um, the Widow is probably... Well, I'd actually say the Widow is my favorite because it's heavily Aether-based and the Arcane Bomb is great for lowering Aether resistance, but it's also really good for for, for Lightning now as well. So it's actually got better. But um, in terms of which Shrine surprised me the most, it's Shrine. Which Constellation surprised me the most, I would definitely say Scales of Okama. It, like, it, it has a ton of health. It has a, a damage-boosting node. It has energy regen, um, and the ability is not bad. It's not the best on hit ability. I'd probably say the Behemoth has that, but yeah, the um, the scales of Okama definitely surprised me the most. It might even be the best full constellation as well. That's debatable, I think. Um, now, for for constellations I didn't like, I think <laughs> I'm just throwing this out there. Uh, I think I would say every third tier constellation I have gone for, I have respect out of it for passive bonuses and defensive bonuses and for earlier constellations. Um, I think the one the one thing with devotion right now that is a negative is they really need to make the third tier stuff much, much more appealing in terms of the craziness it can provide. Because you have to... You have to put a lot into them to get those third tier abilities and they just aren't worth it in all honesty because you can go and get passive stuff to enhance what your character does already and like the earlier abilities I think are a little more useful. So like for like my Albrecht's Aether Ray character, Aether Fire and Arcane Bomb off of the Imp and the Widow respectively are worth way more than going for like spear of the heavens even though spear of the heavens is like a third tier aether ability so yeah um in answer to this question skills of okama and i just thought i'd throw out a, another devotion opinion galaxy class 
What made you decide to get into making videos on YouTube? So I, I think the biggest thing was there is this podcast, well, net, well, video podcast, I guess, called uh, Teamwork Cast, which did Monster Hunter just for funsy play through uh, Monster Hunter like th Try and Freedom Unite and then 3, or no, and then 3U when there's 3G, I think, and then 3U when it actually came out. And I think they did a little bit for Monster Hunter 4 and 4U, but they pretty much stopped um, after 3U. And uh, I, I thought it was really fun that they could play a game for fun and make it a hobby. And I decided, hey, me and my friend Calvo could kind of do that, and that's what we started with. And the the videos that started on this channel were Monster Hunter 3U videos, um, which are laughably bad now. Like, I still stumble over my words and occasionally slur things together, but, like, those were bad. Like, really bad. Like, I almost want to delete them bad, but I'm not gonna. And uh, Monster Hunter Generations is definitely going to be a game we're going to play. So it's going to come full circle about two years later. Um, so yeah, I've also been trying to make it a bit of a job, but that's been only going okay so far. So anyways, yeah, um, got to do it because of Monster Hunter and probably going to come back to Monster Hunter. Sino asks, when he's not playing slash recording Grim Dawn and making videos, what is Wolf Overclock doing with his life? Also, why did you keep calling, why, why do I want to keep calling you Wolfram Alpha Overclocked? Am I the only one? Um, well, what am I doing with my life? I think the word masturbation probably applies pretty well. Okay, so anyways, the real answer would be, um, right now, my the projects I'm doing outside of just working are the YouTube channel, writing a novel, trying to restart my, my illustration career, because I kind of let it falter a bit, and I got to get back into it. Um, and in various and sundry little hobbies. And, uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much what I'm, I would say I'm doing my life right now outside of making videos. And, um, I think you are the only one that wants to say Wolfram overclocked though. My brain is about as powerful as Wolfram alpha. I mean, that's a total lie, but I can dream. So Al Morgoth asks, what and where do you farm the game? I'm asking because you have a lot of good gear and don't seem to, f and I don't seem to find anything, and don't seem to find nothing in Ultimate. Um, and then Rubber Stig um, would also like an answer to this question. So the main thing I do to get gear is just play the game. Right now I, I have so many characters that I have to run through the game, and that usually ends up with the characters running through level 50 plus a lot. I just get my gear off of drops mostly. Um, a lot of my gear, the epics especially, are from the early access days, and I've just kept them. I use Grim Dawn Stash, GG Stash, as a database for all of that, and um, the legendaries I've gotten have mostly been from drops, just random drops from around the world, and some trading. Not a lot of trading, but some trading. I don't do Grim Dawn sidekicking. I don't use Grim Dawn Stash's custom crafting. Um, yeah, it's mostly it's mostly drops and the occasional trades with people, both both in like going online and occasionally like, oh, do you have this piece of gear? Yeah, I do. Here you go. And then I'll be like, oh, do you want this piece of gear? And they'll go, yeah, I do. And I go, here you go. Or it's through picking up a shared stash, um, and occasionally pulling items out of it. But I only do that if I need something for editorial purposes, like if it's, I have to do this build video and this item is necessary for the build video, then it's like, I'll go and grab someone's shared stash that they posted online and pick the item out of that. Otherwise it is all pretty much just whatever's dropped has dropped. Um, I try not to rely too much on legendaries. It happens though, as you progress through the game, um, I am either going to post before this video or after this video a short demonstration of a character running through ultimate with all blues and a green. Um, the gear, like the gear is, but the gear is all based on what's dropped. And then a lot of times, like 
if it's a good piece of gear drop, that'll change how I'm doing my build, build videos. Um, otherwise, it's just it's just running through the game over and over again. Now, my current, I think, favorite little farming spot to do right now, because I'm looking for a good spectral longsword still, is I really enjoy going from the Broken Hills Rift Gate into the old into the Arcavian Undercity. And then running to Nomos Dread, then Laudus. Like, you go east and you'll encounter Nomos Dread, the oligarch that's right there. Um, you kill him, and then you, like, I ignore a lot of trash mobs along the way or just hit them with a giant Electra's Flash Freeze. And then I will run north again to get to the second level of the Arcavian Undercity. Go down there, kill Laudus. Like, go loop around, kill Laudus, loop up. And the character right now is currently cold-based. So I have him skipping Ravina Kerr, but you can kill Ravina Kerr if you if you aren't cold based. It just takes too much time. And then I run to the third level, kill Kilrian, grab all those chests in that area, and then go back to town. Um, you get you're you're getting three or four depending on who you're killing, um, heroes including Kilrian, um, and then it's like those are four guaranteed heroes. And then if you have Nemesis with Undead, I believe there are three spots Muzalek can can pop up there and then um there are, there are usually a couple other heroes just floating around in there so yeah it's it's a fun ish easy ish um quick ish just run through a bunch of of guaranteed spawns and i mean there there are a couple other places you could probably farm up like steps of torment or bastion of chaos but um to loop back to my real answer, I've just played the game through a lot of times, and that's where I get all my gear from. What was your inspiration to start Grim Dawn Guides and gameplay videos? Smiley face. Uh, believe it or not, it was the first like game stuff that I posted that kind of worked. Like, I I I do really really love Grim Dawn, and it's on like my probably top ten favorite games of all time list. But um. <laughs> like I wish I could say oh it was my love of Grim Dawn that inspired me to make these videos uh, it was because they kind of worked a little bit and I enjoy playing the game so it's a mix of that and it's a mix of those two things I just like Grim Dawn and they worked and they're really working right now because of Grim Dawn's release and I hope they keep working in the future but yeah that's like it wasn't any like ding moment it was just oh these got more views than the other videos. I'll focus on Grim Dawn for a while. And I want to get other games on the channel. Don't get me wrong. I actually want the channel to be more of a various games channel. It's just I haven't found a game that I really, really love playing a lot that I think would do well as a YouTube playthrough. <laughs> I mean, there are games I can think of where I was like, oh, I could really play that a lot and have fun doing it. But I don't know that would work on a channel. That being said, there are like there are games where I'm gonna go back to them or like really actually play them. Like I gotta get back on Pillars of Eternity, but Grim Dawn's release came out just as I started playing that game. And then um I think I wanna do Final Fantasy Tactics, Legends of the Link to the Past, and Maybe a couple other games in there. And I know Monster Hunter Generations is gonna be a game I'm gonna play on the channel with my friend Cavo. I do guide videos for that as well. But, um, yeah, Grim Dawn, the reason I do it is because it kind of worked. I mean, I wish I could say something more uh, in-depth or not as almost selfishy as that, but there it is. So, uh, Jeroian, upcoming games you're looking forward to. Monster Hunter Generations. I am super excited for that game. I, I've been watching Monster Hunter Cross stuff since the game was released in Japan, and I even considered buying, like, this is my 3DS. I even considered buying a Japanese 3DS just for that game. If it could record or not, I would have done it. I, I would have done it if we didn't get a Monster Hunter Generations announcement um, pretty much this month. I probably would have bought the Japanese game and a Japanese 3DS, but now it's just waiting for the summer, and I'm going to get try to get a 3ds i can record off of just for that game and um 
I think the only other game that I'm like really, really bullish on wanting to play is Lost Ark. It's an action RPG with Mermerpager elements, and uh, it looks really fun. I've watched the trailer videos like three, four times already, and I'm like, I just want to see more of this game and what it does and actual gameplay instead of like the demo-y stuff, because it looks like it's a really awesome action RPG, and um, e- it, I know it's getting a Korean release, obviously, because it's a Korean game, and I know they're going to do a Chinese release, but a, a Western release is up in the air, and I would consider trying to get in on the Korean slash Chinese releases just to play the game. It looks that good. And I mean, maybe Lineage Eternal a little bit, but that looks kind of slow. There's some interesting things in that, in the trailer video for it, but I don't know if it's going to be something I, I really want to hop on. I can't think of any other games coming out that I'm really, really like, ooh, I got to play that. Um, maybe Guilty Gear x Revelator, but I think I'd have, yeah, I know I'd have to buy at least a PS3 for that or a PS4. But I'm looking forward to gameplay videos of that, at least. Tom, you, what have you played before Grim Dawn? What have you enjoyed the most? Slash, what are your favorite games of all time? So, uh, I've been playing games since I was six years old. And I'm almost 32 now. So, that starts with a tiny bit of Atari. And then right into the Nintendo Entertainment System. Then right into the SNES. And then to the N64 and PlayStation. Then GameCube and PS2. And then Wii and Wii U. And obviously PC games sporadically worked in there. So, uh, yeah, you could probably guess all the games on the Nintendo and the SNES. It's all Zelda and Mario with, like, some obscure things thrown in there, like freaking nasty Aniax, Metroid, and Super Metroid, and um, Final Fantasy games and Final Fantasy Tactics. I don't play those games as much anymore, except for, ta- for Tactics, because I don't have the time to run through a 60-hour story. Um... But, uh, yeah, lots and lots of, lots and lots of NES and SNES games. Lots of PlayStation games as well. Um, SNES is probably my favorite console of all time. And I can't think of, um, any other specific games. Metroid Prime was huge. It's on my top ten, definitely. So Super Metroid. And, uh, yeah, Diablo 2, I think, was my favorite action RPG until Grim Dawn. <laughs> So yeah, that's a that's a basic overview of, of games games from long past. And I've considered just like getting either well, I'd probably do it on the virtual console. But um yeah, playing a lot of old games on the channel, I've considered doing it. Uh I just don't know how interesting they'd be to watch. I mean they'd probably be interesting at some level, but they're also they're also all games that have been played to just bored down by everyone playing them. It's just I don't know if anyone would actually watch them either. But anyways, yeah, those are you know favorite games of all time. Probably would go like a tie for uh, Final Fantasy Tactics and A Link to the Past. And then like Super Metroid, Metroid Prime, um, Diablo 2 is in there, Grim Dawn's in there, Monster Hunter. As a series, I consider it just basically one game that keeps getting stuff added to it. And uh, yeah. I should really do a top 10 list at some time, now that I think about it. To Saluko. Great job, man. Not technically a question, but thank you anyways. Cameron, dog or cat? Dog. Mr. Trafalgar, since when do you play Grim Dawn? How many hours have you played? I think I'm up to about 830 and change for hours on Grim Dawn. I've been playing it since about build 18 in early access. I think, I think the major thing added to the game when I started playing were two-handers. And I think the Steps of Torment were just added to the game as well. So it was Act 2, about build 18, 19. Two-handers added the, added the game. There was no Arcanist at that point. The Shaman wasn't even known about at that point. Um, I think the Arcanist was previewed around then. But, um... Yeah, that's when I got in the Grim Dawn with a really kind of crappy... Fire Strike Commando, I think, was the first character I made. That Well, it wasn't that crappy. He was able to do stuff. But it was a Fire Strike Commando. Two pistols was the first ki- first character I ever had that could actually run, like, steps. And I had fun playing with. 
And then the Arcanist came out, and it was all Arcanist all the time from then on out. Even when the Arcanist was really, really bad. Morton Pressman, have you ever thought about starting a Grim Dawn clan slash guild? Personally, I think it would be great, a great way to get more people to play together, apart from the the uh, random strangers you can join in multiplayer. So, um, until this question, I haven't, I hadn't actually given it much thought, but I actually think that'd be a great idea, and I can think of a couple people who would maybe want to help organize it. So, uh, I may start posting videos about organizing a clan slash guild in the near future. It would probably have to be done through either the Grim Dawn forums, a YouTube channel or two, and then maybe over Steam and Skype. Let's get a group to get... Like, I don't know if there's grouping on... Yeah, there are groups. I'm looking at the friends list right now. It says groups. So, yeah. Um, that might be a good time, a good place to do that. Uh, I have to consult with one or two people, and then we'll, we'll, we'll try to set it up, I think. And I'll make a video about setting it up and the where's when's how where's when's how's etc uh guild thing added into the game is a mod but we'll have to see about that one so yes um stay tuned on that we'll see if we can get a clan slash guild together in the near future so Sephumbra. Simple one. What is your favorite hobby? So, first things first. These are my dice bags and my counters. So, I use these for playing Pathfinder and for playing well, there's glare on that box. Playing Magic the Gathering. This is box number one of my commander decks. Well, box number two, technically, because box number one is the far more superior put together return to Ravnica gift box. Which also is filled with sleeved up commander decks. So my number one hobby is Magic, Magic the Gathering. Number two would be pen and paper RPGs probably. Specifically Pathfinder. I have friends that really like the Palladium system but for me it's Pathfinder is my favorite. Tony Eccles. Which class have you had the most fun with in Grim Dawn? Not the best, the one you've enjoyed the most. Well, as it happens a lot, um, like I mentioned Magic the Gathering, and my favorite, like I'm wearing my Simic Guild shirt, it's hard to see because of the light, but um, <laughs> my favorite magic colors are blue and green. Not because they're the best, but because I enjoy blue and green the most. Favorite tribe is elves. Not because they're great, I mean they're great, but... Even if they were bad, even if blue and green to get together were bad, I would still play those colors. Still play that tribe. In Grim Dawn, I, my favorite classes I've played are my Sorcerer, my Albrecht Aetheris Sorcerer, and Spellbreakers. And they're probably the two best class combinations in the game. Um, so, uh, <laughs> it's just, I've, if the Sorcerer or Spellbreakers... Sorcerer Spellbreaker were not good, I would probably still play them from a flavor standpoint. And, uh, yeah, they're, they've been my most fun stuff so far. Um, the, the Albrecht's Aether Ray character especially, and now that he's actually using, like, Thermite Mines and Mortar Traps with, all with like, all of his other stuff, um, it's, it's gotten a lot of fun for having this sort of micromanagement of things added in. And, uh, I have a Spellbreaker that's entering melee now that does Cold Aether, who's really fun as well. So, those are my two favorite builds right now. Um, and I do think the Sorcerer is probably the best class combo in the game, because there's so many builds you can make with it, and it's really hard to screw it up. And, uh, same thing with the Spellbreaker. There are a lot of builds you can do with that, and they're very hard to screw up. Um, Sino and I are actually going to be doing a tier list discussion for individual classes and then class combos. And it's going to be like an impromptu back and forth thing with very, very little notes that we both come up with. I just have no idea when we're going to get to recording it. Because <laughs> um, we got to get our like we got to get our schedules to kind of line up and then do it. So um, stay tuned for that. For the actual, like, what we think is best. And what's most fun. We'll probably just cover fun in that as well. But yeah, most fun... Sorcerers and Spellbreakers. 
Zegna Fane, what is your all-time favorite video game? Well, as I mentioned before, Legend, Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, and Final Fantasy Tactics are tied for the top. I used to have them vie for top spot in my head, but it's like I can't just choose one of them. Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, I think it was maybe the first thing I ever bought with my own money. Um, I mean, that's like when I was 12, so it was like birthday money, but whatever. Um, and uh, I think... Uh, I, I just have a lot of memories playing that game and discovering all the stuff in it because that was pre-internet. And it was it was like, yeah, there were guides in like Nintendo Power, but most of that game was just discovering and uncovering everything just on my own, looking around and exploring. And that was great. And then Final Fantasy Tactics, like, but the problem with Legend of Zelda Link to the Past, for me at least, is I can play through it in a day. I could probably do a 100% playthrough in, like, four or five hours max. It's, it's like, it's such a, a game I know where everything is that I don't think I, I could play it now unless I were recording it. I mean, I should probably just do that. But, yeah, it's it's one of those games where it's, it's I've played it into the ground, basically, because it's such a great game, and it's one of my favorite games ever. The other is Final Fantasy Tactics, and Final Fantasy Tactics is more of maybe once every year or so, year or two, I'll pick the game up and play nothing but it for four to six hours a day, every day for like two weeks, and then put it down again. Um, it's one of those games where every time you play it, it's something different. It Like, all of the battles can be completely different based on what the, the, the enemies do and what you've got as your team. Um, the job system is a amazing because you can basically pick any two jobs and then like a reaction support and movement ability and then equip the character with all sorts of equipment and and it's like you can create all these unique classes you can do like oh this is my this is such and such a character from this thing as a final fantasy tactics class or final fantasy tactics character here are my friends as final fantasy tactics characters and it's like so much there's so much you can do in that that game and, like, I mentioned putting, like, 830 hours in Grim Dawn. I'm probably up to four digits in Final Fantasy Tactics in terms of hours played. So, yeah. Link to the Past, Final Fantasy Tactics. So, uh, last question is from Vectilian. Would, you t would Twitch be something you're interested in? Yes or no? Smiley face. Keep up the awesome job. I guess it's what my dear friend and thank you for the great videos and easy to understand info all the time. Well, you're welcome. I, I try to explain things simply and um, concisely and not stumble over my words, which I do constantly. But anyways, um, Twitch is something I do really want to do. The problem, though, is I have crap Internet and I don't want to do like a like a, a MOV file from from like 1999 quality upload at like this big on your screen and you can't see anything. So yeah, uh, if I got, if I can get better internet, um, upload mostly, I will start streaming, but that'll be something that has to wait until that happens. Oh, and, uh, one, I actually want to answer that I ask myself and I'm sure, I'm sure there's gotta be at least one person out there who cares, but, uh, favorite movie ever is Blade Runner awesome movie that is great on every level for me personally and it's just a great movie least favorite movie ever my most hated movie ever a movie i have considered doing a plinket slash red letter media style review for not even joking that's how much i hate it is star trek into darkness i could probably make a video longer than that movie talking about how much i hated that movie and I don't, I'm not even like a Star Trek fan, just as a movie goer and someone who pays attention to how movies are made. There are no words. Like I can literally only make a gesture at that movie. Like if there were like words would take way too long to explain everything about that movie. I really disliked. Oh, and that's the first question. So that is all of the questions in not 15 minutes. <laughs> so, uh, thanks for watching everyone. 
Um, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you'd like me to do more answering of questions, whatever they are, they could be about almost literally anything, um, you can leave them on that original Q&A video, or leave them in the comments below. So uh, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.